Violence is expensive. War is expensive. Theft is expensive. In fact, virtually all violations of the non-aggression principle are, in the long run, extremely expensive. Occasionally you can find examples of NAP violations that might seem advantageous in the short run. However, relative to a pattern of behavior that is consistent with the NAP, they are expensive. This is a universal rule that is denied when one is presented with an oppression narrative. And I maintain, or I will suggest in this video, that all oppression narratives are based in narcissism, and they are essentially threat narratives. Now, I got the term threat narrative from Alison Tiemann, and I reply it and use it in ways that I don't think she has done so explicitly. And um, I look forward to hopefully having the chance to discuss this with her in person at the ICMI, because I'm, I'm curious of whether or not I'm kind of taking it too far and bastardizing it, or if maybe I'm adding something kind of valuable to it, because I consider the threat narrative series that she's done on YouTube to be among the most um, very profound and interesting videos in all of YouTube, which I will link in the description. But a threat narrative has a target. And the idea is that you're going to package your target as an aggressor. And I maintain that this is what um, most threat narratives do, is they package their target as the aggressor in order to justify aggressions against that target as retaliation. So essentially, the use of threat narratives actually serves as the most profound and universal justification for the non-aggression principle. And this is something that um, I'd really appreciate if like Stefan Molyneux had any um, input on, you know, to, to see if this is something that could be like a new approach to universally preferable behavior. I do believe that all of these things are related. Um, and honestly, if there's a triad of <laughs> secular humanistic morality where we have Stefan Molyneux, Alison Tiemann, and myself, I would be just very, very humbled to, to be part of that sort of a thing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I'm laughing at the idea of it because I'm, I'm so much more low profile and casual than, than the both of them. Um, but it, that's not really the point of this video. My point is I'm, I'm looking specifically at the idea of all oppression narratives as an expression of narcissism. So right now I'm watching the movie Get Out. And what occurs to me is that there's actually a lot of very interesting things to say about this movie. In general, I'll say that it is a very good movie. I'm going to quickly recap the movie. Obviously, there's spoilers here. However, I honestly believe this movie is spoiler-proof. So, you know, if you are someone who thinks that spoilers ruin the movie for you, I say pause the video and please watch it, especially if you already are, like, subscribed to Netflix. It's there, available for free. Like, watch it. I, I, I can guarantee you, you're not going to be bored. You will not be bored watching this movie, because it's technically a horror movie, and all horror movies are entertaining. Even if they're, if they're bad, they're funny, therefore they're good. Or if they're good, they're good, therefore they're good, right? So horror movies are the best genre of movies just hands fucking down. Now, this movie actually fails as a horror movie because it's not scary at all at any point. The fact that they try to cast it as a horror is just stupid. It's cast as a comedy slash horror slash satire, and it's a satire of horror, which makes it a comedy, but it contains authentic racial criticism. So it's, 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 in, a, it's in a very weird space, and that makes it kind of a fun movie to watch, just because it is a little bit different, and that's fine, but... 
just so so it's not ruined by the plot being spoiled it's, it's like a fucking greek tragedy like you fucking know where it's gonna go and that's part of the experience so anyway so in this movie you have a black guy who has a white girlfriend and they're driving their car and they hit a deer and the deer is symbolic and then they go to her parents house and her parents are like these like white fucking liberals who are super duper sensitive about his race and racial issues and the wife is a hypnotist more about that later and uh, like the white dad is like really tripping over himself going out of his way to seem like he's super goddamn woke and like it's obviously very uncomfortable to the black guy like for like very obvious reasons right but like to leftist liberals this is like profound this idea that their wokeness is like uncomfortable to black people to them they're like whoa like they're seeing it depicted dramatically so to them it like really resonates and that's why this movie was so popular spoiler that that, that's really the reason why even though there's actually other merits to the film that like actually make it a good movie but like it's totally eclipsed by just like liberals being woke and fucking stupid and like subhumans in my opinion so anyway, eventually, like, he's looking at the situation, they have these, like, black servants, and they act really weird and seem like they're fucking hypnotized, because, spoiler alert, they are, and it turns out the hypnotism is part of, like, a three-stage process, where first they hypnotize you, and then they, like, deep fucking hypnotize you and brainwash you and give you a psychological pre-op to a point where they, like, actually fucking surgically alter your goddamn brain to make you one of their black slaves. So these white people go through this, like, excessive efforts to, like, create actual black slaves under the radar, right? And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, it sounds like a, a fucking joke, but this is, like, actually the plot of the movie. And, like, the movie makes fun of itself for having this plot at multiple points. So they go through all this, and eventually he's, like, figuring out the plan, and at the deepest stage of the psychological transfer, he figures out the fucking plan, and he, like, ends up resisting all the people. He finds out his girlfriend is fucking in on the whole thing, because it's basically a Texas Chainsaw Massacre where the whole goddamn family's in on it, and he basically murders them all on his way out, but he accidentally hits one of the black servants on his way out, which reminds him of how his mom died. And so he, like, tries to save her, but then, of course, the black woman, like, betrays him because she's already been brainwashed. But his friend, who he was speaking to from the very beginning, like, learned the whole plan independently based upon clues that were given to him through his phone and, like, saves him in the end, and, like, he ends up, like, escaping or whatever. And there's a lot of, like, really interesting, like, really kind of funny imagery, like, when the brother is, like, trying to put him in a chokehold and is counting one Mississippi to Mississippi. Like, obviously, that's, like, supposed to be, like, a white supremacist, like, dog whistle is that he's saying Mississippi, right? And, of course, the last family member holding down the fort trying to track him down is the girlfriend and she's like chasing him with the shotgun right like get on my properly find my shotgun right like it, it the, 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 there's, there's a lot of like semi-subtle imagery that that's very well done and very interesting in, in the movie so it's it's never not entertaining but that's basically the plot and the plot is like fucking stupid in general it's a very well done very entertaining very thought-provoking movie However, I believe that most of the people who watch it and say it's a very good movie, I think that these are predominantly people who understand that if they say they don't like it, that they're going to risk um, being seen as somebody who doesn't pick up on the, the racial criticisms in it. And on the flip side, if they say they do like it, then they are acknowledging that, oh, I see all of this white liberal racism. I can definitely see all of it, right? And then it sort of becomes a way for the, the white liberal to wipe their conscience clean. But what's very fascinating about this movie is that I'm reading some of the, the criticisms of it and some of the critique of it and the reception of it. And a lot of people mention that the director himself is one of the most, one of the best characters, right? Because of the way he produced it and blah, 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 and all these things. And <laughs> I, I actually agree. I agree that the director is a character in this movie himself. 
Because when I'm watching this movie and I see the use of hypnosis and, you know, the sunken state, to me, as a more right-wing, conservative, slash libertarian-minded person, it's immediately, instantaneously, ham-fistedly obvious to me that the hypnosis in the movie is the welfare state, and the sunken state is, of course, the, the result of this, right? <laughs> and, 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 like, it's so, like, hilariously ham-fisted, this metaphor. Like, there's absolutely no subtlety to it when you look at it in that light. However, like, a leftist progressive conser- or progressive liberal, like, they can't see it that way. However, they do, in fact, perceive... Um, soft bigotry of low expectations, they do perceive leftist white racism, which is part of this phenomenon of, you know, SJWs and the left eating their own, because they are often correct when they criticize each other for being racist, that they are correct. They absolutely are. The problem is that they they believe that they're going to reach this higher standard by doing this, right? That's going to be unassailable. And the irony, of course, is that their means, their process of there's this hyper criticism and this hyper ridiculous focused awareness of, of race that it's always going to be the case that, that that's what's going on. Right. And that the answer is actually to, to go in a very different direction. But they can't perceive that or acknowledge it. Instead, what they can do is they can say they like this movie and in doing so they kind of move themselves towards like the new the new apex of this this liberal motion towards you know ever immortal wokeness so so the irony though from a conservative perspective if you haven't seen get out i highly recommend you watch it because it's truly like a meta drama it's a drama played out by the existence of the movie and the general positive reception of the movie as well (laughs) and that's what makes it so so funny is that the liberal reception of it actually reinforces a lot of the racial critiques in the movie now the takeaway of the racial critiques in the movie is that um the idea is that like when these things happen they're supposed to kind of go under the radar and it's like liberals do these things and you 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 you're not you perceive it as racist when you're watching the movie but of course in reality this is just interwoven and it's just part of the reality and blah 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 right it's just it's so stupid because it's self-defeating if you're watching the movie and you can understand that like this soft bigotry is incredibly racist if you can see that then <laughs> like if you're able to perceive it and that it's 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 so popular right that kind of defeats the argument because if that racism is so obvious and so popular to to mock and to ridicule then it demonstrates that it's not really this prevalent overwhelming subversive force that it needs to be in order to the, for this movie to make any goddamn sense at face value <laughs> so this movie like only would have made sense as a criticism of the modern world if it weren't so popular. Its popularity proves that it's actually kind of bullshit. And what it's really reflecting is black narcissism. Because you have like this scenario where these black people are hypnotized and then they become these virtual slaves, right? And the idea is like these black people don't want this and that these white people do want to do this, right? There's this, like, big scene where the the father of the white girlfriend is asking the main character, who basically has no personality beyond being, like, what, a photographer that is trying to quit smoking, and he's racist against white people, but that's kind of normal. That's just, like, depicted... He's supposed to be, like, this perfectly normal black person, and, like, his anti-white racism is just, like... A generally accepted like normal thing <laughs> and that's all we have for this character but he asks this character like what is your purpose right and they go into this like existential bullshit thing that's supposed to be this like epic climax of the movie or whatever it's like it's so pretentious and retarded but 
just taking a step back and looking at it, it's like, so you believe that white people like want to go through this hypnosis in order to have these like black servants who just really desperately want to be free and they were tricked into this welfare state kind of situation, right? When in reality, it's it's black people like begging for this and voting for this, right? And like wanting all of these policies and consistently voting in favor of having affirmative action. And when you see these like black conservatives and conservatives trying to cater to black people, it's always like, what's in it for me? And we try to explain to black people very slowly that capitalism benefits everyone. So even if there's more economic inequality overall, that means that the poorest of the poor are still better off, right? But, but that's never good enough. It's always, well, what's in it for me in particular? And then the black, and then, you know, black conservatives and everyone, like Candace fucking Owens, they have to fucking, like, trip over themselves being like, well, the Democrats are the real racists and all this just, like, stupid bullshit that's, like, so pedantic and condescending and annoying. And, like, any black person who's actually worth a damn, like fucking Thomas Sowell, understands this shit and understands this shit perfectly well. So, like, this whole very, very popular way of approaching black issues and trying to gain the votes of minorities, it's, I find it to be just so insulting and stupid, and it, it really, really makes me sympathize with the alt-right in a really sincere way that I, I really wish I didn't have to ever. And I'd, I'd like to live in a reality where... You know, when, when, when you present a black person with a choice between big government influence and control over their life versus freedom, that rather than saying, well, what's in it for me personally, they say, oh, I see that the morally, ethically correct position is to get rid of the goddamn government. And, like, there's enough black people who are counterexamples to this, who, who understand these principles that I, I don't believe that it's it, that like an ethno state is fucking necessary i just i, I really don't i really would believe that you know the, the the multicultural capitalist state is always going to be superior to the ethno state of any variety you know but you know in large numbers it remains to be seen so you know, I'll cross my fingers, I'll do what I can. Hopefully this video makes some goddamn sense to some people. But, um, basically, in Get Out, the idea is that these black people are, like, tricked into this whole thing. When in reality, it's, like, black people begging to be put into these, like, subservient roles relative to the white people to have some level of that white wealth and the idea is that the white people they just like want to go out of their way through all this extra effort just to have like servants of a particular skin color and it's so stupid it's really stupid because from the perspective of like a, a, a really really genuinely racist person why would you want your servants to be black like if you hate black people you don't want them as your servants you want like white servants Right? Like, why would you prefer to have servants of a race that you hate and want to, like, have power over? It's this, like, sadistic mindset. And it's part of a threat narrative. It's part of an anti-white threat narrative that white people would rather have, like, less effective, less amicable servants that are inferior to them so long as they can, like, have this facade of being superior to that race. And it's ultimately an expression of black narcissism this idea that's like like, like like i'm so important that you want to go out of your way to oppress me no near the end of the movie he's trying to escape from the house and it's this dramatic play between the brother of his girlfriend who he thought he had like knocked out or incapacitated right who of course comes back because the movie uses a lot of like horror cliches very intentionally and that's one of them so he comes back at the end, and he's trying to stop him, right? So, like, multiple times in the scene, he, like, grabs the door, and then the white guy stops him, you know? And it's like, I'm sorry, but when Malcolm X was telling the black people, let's have a Back to Africa movement and, like, fuck off and just leave this goddamn country, you know, you had, like, racist white people who were like, yes, 
leave, please go. And then non-racist white people being like, oh, well, I guess if you want to go, like, that's okay, but I'd really prefer if you could stay and have sex with my daughter. You know, it's like, like, it's just this idea that there's this interplay culturally of white people preventing black people from leaving America. No, that's not a thing. I'm sorry, that is 0% a thing. If you have evidence of that being a thing, please fucking blow blow my fucking shit out in the fucking comment section and let me know how fucking wrong I am, but I highly doubt this. This is one example of how the movie like is portraying this thing that's just completely culturally the opposite, and it's because the white people in the movie aren't depicting white people at all. They're depicting this, like, weird racist caricature that doesn't exist. And, you know, it it does exist in terms of, like, the superficial white benevolent racism, but then you have this other part of their psychosis where they're, like, trying to make the black people slaves, and it's entirely the opposite of what they're saying, right? They just set it up as this facade for like, oh, you actually want us to be slaves. No, the reason the white liberals are doing that is because they're dumb. They're dumb, subhuman, NPC fucking scum. And if there was a fucking back to whatever fucking vile, hideous fucking video game, you fucking subhuman monsters, you subhuman white monsters spawned from, I say go back to that fucking country. I hate you and I don't want you in my fucking country no matter where the fuck I move. I despise you. That is the group of people that I want a goddamn ethno state to escape from. These fucking woke liberals of any race. I hate all of them. So call this hate speech. I don't give a fuck. Like, fuck it. The black people who see this as, like, the normal expression of whiteness, fuck you. You're the most racist fucking people on the planet for thinking that this is typical of white people. And, like, this is one thing the movie never really does, is there's no relationship between this, like, facade of white virtue signaling in favor of black people, this sort of virtue signalist kind of benevolent racist thing that they're mocking, which is why everyone likes the movie. That part of it is entirely disconnected from this intentional forced servitude and forced slavery of the black people that they you know, later have this grand reversal where they reveal that's what these white people are actually up to. These white people make absolutely zero sense as people because there's no relationship between those two things. So, and, and like, you need that gap to make sense in order for this movie to make any sense, but it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't the only way that you can bridge that gap is just by saying white people are evil and by engaging in the same sort of racism that you're supposedly condemning by saying that you're this woke person who loves this movie at face value and that's what this movie was ultimately an expression of is it's this black narcissism that white people are so obsessed with hating you that they'll do it to a point of cultivating multiple conflicted personalities that simultaneously, like, seek your favor and seek, like, appreciation and approval from you and forgiveness from you from everything bad that they've done while also wanting to continually perpetuate all of those things. And this idea that when white people do things like have welfare that disproportionately benefits black people and having affirmative action programs targeted at like black people that they're doing it because they actually want to enslave you now you're correct in perceiving that the effect of these programs is that yes it puts you in that sunken state where you're hypnotized and you lose your agency and are forced to do it The problem is that you're completely misappropriating the agency. The fact is that it's black people begging to be put into these states of servitude and that it's white people who accidentally end up in these states of ruling over you. 
And as painful and as awful as that is to admit, that is in fact the harsh truth of the situation. And that's something that I hate having to say, and I don't want to have to say it, and I don't want to be this person spreading this idea. I, I literally 0% want, I, 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 I don't care about white people, is something that people need to understand. I don't care. Like, my whiteness is so little part of my identity. To me, it's always about ideas, and that's why all of the most vicious, most awful, mean things I will say about anyone is based upon the things they think and the things they say. And very often that corresponds to religion, which is chosen, or political ideology, which is chosen. It's ultimately a matter of volition and action and not identity. And that, that's the thing is that people will look at me and they'll say, you're a sexist, you're a racist. And it's like, no, no, this is absolutely the opposite of what I am. And it's the opposite of what I want to be seen as and what I want to present as. However, there's correlation. And I think that there's a predominance of identity-based prescriptions to things that is leading people to these false conclusions. So anyway, that's, that's basically the point. The point is that what this movie is representing reverses the group-based general sort of volition of each group. You know, you might have some white people who, like, legitimately are sadistic fucks who actually would like to see black people in this subservient position and would like to sort of perpetrate this kind of thing as, like, a sort of sick fantasy. You know, I'll grant you at least that much. But the idea that that is, like, prevalent enough that this movie is useful as a cultural or social critique of America is completely goddamn stupid. All of these white liberals who you criticize for being overly aggressively, hyper benevolently racist in favor of you, they're not doing it towards some end. They're stupid. And even though their end is ultimately hurting black people, they don't perceive that. And even the ones who watch this movie and like it are not going to come away with this message because they're too dumb. They're too fucking dumb. And I will say it openly. I hate them for it. I think they have no excuse. I despise them for it. I spit on them. They are less than human to me. I want 0% association or involvement with such people, you know, to as reasonable of a degree as I can manage. And that's probably the most openly, like, hateful, aggressive thing I'll ever say on my channel, is that people need to fucking fix that belief if that's how they see things. And I'm open to them realizing this and, and gaining in the knowledge and, and bettering themselves in that way. I, I do believe that's possible. I don't think it's a permanent thing. I really don't. I'm very white-pilled. I'm very nice. I'm actually a very... I am super nice. I don't know if anyone knows this, but I'm a really, really kind person. Um, but yeah, it's based on a reversal of the agency of each person. And ultimately, it's this like black narcissism is what this movie is an anthem to. It's black people saying, you hate me so much that you want to oppress me. No, all of the things you're criticizing are from people who want to help you and they're doing it in a dumb way. And all the people who hate you, they are saying get out. They're kicking you out, right? In the movie, the people who say get out are the other slaves. In reality, it's racist white people saying get out. And to be perfectly clear, I'm not one of those people. I, I don't say get out. I say to all of the liberals and all the goddamn commies, you get out. You fucking get out and go to a fucking commies. You go to fucking cucked ass Europe and get raped by fucking your woke ass fucking progressive fucking shit with your fucking islamic fucking hellscape now i had a couple of thoughts about the use of hypnotism which are i guess not totally relevant to the video but i kind of wanted to include because i i thought it was interesting so i'm going to mention it here because it's my channel and that's why you come here is for what i think so hypnotism is interesting because the use of any form of mind control is very ethereal, right? It's intangible. It's psychic. It's pussy, right? Like, you wave your fingers at someone and say some words. It's all of these, like, uses of things that are extremely ineffectual. 
yet the effect of them ends up being physical domination of the mind, which results in domination of the body on a profound physical scale, right? The extreme version of mind control is like someone shoots invisible fucking waves at you and then just like, despite all of your will, you're just forced to do all these things, right? It's complete erosion and erasure of the agency of the target. And that, that, that's a very interesting thing that they've done here. They've given the power of hypnosis to the wife in this house, right? And I just want to note, um, there, there's something, this actress, I, I think she's very beautiful. I think she's a really great example of an older woman who's aged very gracefully. I think that if we're honest with ourselves, as far as like cougars go, she's, she's on the hit list. And when I say hit, I mean hitting it, right? Like, I, I mean, you know, obviously this is a gay man's channel, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, obviously. But I think that she, she aged very gracefully. And, of course, you know, she's, she's playing the mother of an adult woman, right? So, of course, she's supposed to be like a post-wall, you know, 40s, 50s, dare I say 60s aged woman, but... I just, I, I, I found her to be very charming and graceful and just very beautiful. And I think that was intentional. I think they wanted to intentionally also kind of hint at this seductive factor of this older white woman kind of like preying upon the young black man, right? I, 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 I felt that they, they really wanted to kind of sneak in some sexual tension there without making it very explicit because i think that like it's it's this sort of thing that like we all kind of want to admit that some of these like older women they, they do have some kind of sexual appeal to them but if we say it you know r r right out there then that kind of destroys its power and and that's how hypnotism works hypnotism it, it's it's not bullshit right like you can totally hypnotize people and fucking do shit you can use power of suggestion. You can use these really subtle, wizardress fucking manipulations to cause real effects in reality. It's, it's a true thing. But when you're focused on the hypnotism itself, it, it, it's sort of comical, right? Because you're just like, like, like literally the, the hypnotistic focus of this movie was her stirring and clanking her tea and you, you can tell that's what she's using very early on in the movie, right? You're like, oh, like it's the, it's the goddamn tea. She always has her fucking cup of tea. It's not just because she's a white bitch and it's a very white thing. Of course, th th that's one of the reasons they did it. They made it like a very white. It, it's, it's so fucking white to have your little tea plate with your fucking teacup and your little teaspoon and you're fucking stirring your shit and fucking clinking it. That is the whitest shit ever. Fucking Asian bitches don't do that. The Asian bitches, when they're doing their tea, they, like, pour the water over a tea bag into the cup repeatedly and then pour it into a little cup and drink out of the little cup. It's, like, a totally different mechanism. This is a distinctly white form of white wizardry with the fucking white tea. So, anyway, this stupid, like, frivolous use of tea ends up becoming something that by the end of the movie he, like, fears and is like resisting actively whenever he sees the fucking tea he's like oh god no they're gonna fucking pull their fucking white person fucking magic on me again right and and he's right he's absolutely goddamn correct but i think the real magic might be this this cougar's fucking charms and that is everything that you need to know and could possibly learn from the movie get out thank thank you very much for coming here and, and indulging me have a nice day